Hello everyone and welcome back to our video slash podcast series on Colossians, here with our final video. I hope you're well. Our series through Colossians may have felt a bit of a roller coaster of teaching and application. We've been exploring how amazing Jesus is, what he has done for us and what that means for our lives. But the roller coaster isn't quite finished yet as Paul leaves us with some great teaching in the conclusion to the letter of the Colossians as we look at chapter 4 verses 2 to 18. Paul's final part of teaching comes in verses 2 to 6 with a focus on prayer and evangelism. In verse 2 he tells the Colossians to devote to prayer. There's a lot that can distract us from prayer, hence we need to struggle to devote time to pray. Paul also tells the Colossians to be watchful, perhaps of answered prayer or sin or Christ coming back, and to be thankful. In verse 3, Paul asks for prayer, for him to share the gospel. He doesn't ask for the prison doors of his cell to open so he can run away. He asks that God's word would be made known to others. That the mystery of Christ that's mentioned is a throwback to chapter 1, verses verse 27, uh, which was talking about revealing Jesus to the Gentiles. Paul asks in verse 4 that he may proclaim God's word clearly so people can understand it. The Colossians need to also focus on their evangelism, as Paul turns to this in verses 5 and 6. They are to consider how they act towards outsiders in being sensitive to their circumstances but equally taking opportunities presented to share the gospel. Their conversations are to be graceful and salty. They are to show Christ's grace and be interesting in their conversations. Finally, this is so that they are able to answer everyone, perhaps not with all the answers to every question, but the best responses to someone's questions or situations. Our next section in verses seven to 18, focuses on the people who have served alongside Paul. There's actually a lot we can learn from all the people that Paul mentions. Uh, Tychicus is the one who brings the letter and was a fellow worker with Paul. Uh, Just to note, the word minister isn't a role, but a characteristic of being motivated by faith to serve others. Uh, He is sent to give the Colossians the news on Paul and encourage them alongside the teaching of this letter. Onesimus is an interesting person. He's a runaway slave from someone called Philemon, who was a part of this church. The punishment for a slave running away was death. But in verse 9, Paul calls him a brother in the Lord. Furthermore, alongside this letter to the Colossians, there's another letter specifically for Philemon, uh, which you can find later on in the New Testament. And there, Paul tells Philemon to welcome Onesimus. It's Paul applying his teaching on slavery that we looked at in our last video. There are three Jews with Paul, one of whom is Mark, who's the gospel writer, and actually someone who fell out with Paul in Acts. We see that here, maybe they've reconciled, since Paul says to welcome him. Uh, Epaphras is mentioned again who, although is not with the Colossians, is wrestling in prayer for them and is working hard to support other churches in the local area. Demas and Luke are possibly slaves. Luke is the gospel writer and the Acts writer as well. Demas, we actually learn sadly, abandons the faith in 2 Timothy. These three appear to be Gentiles, showing how the church is becoming more inclusive of people of all backgrounds. Finally, we learn in verse 16 that Paul intended for this letter to be shared with other churches and that they are to read another letter. Uh, I'm I'm not quite sure what's going on with Archippus, but something of notes going on there. Paul ends the letter with a plea of prayer for his imprisonment and remembering God's grace. The final, this final passage reminds us that in prayer, and with other Christians, we share and live out the gospel with the church family. As always, there's quite a lot for you to take on there, so here are some questions to help in your discussions. Question one, look at verses two to six. What does Paul say we should 
do in prayer and what we should pray for? In what ways does Paul suggest we can be sharing the gospel? Question two, look at verses 7 to 17. Why do you think Paul mentions all these people at the end? What do you think we can learn from their stories? And finally, question three, look at the passage as a whole and pick out ways in how we can encourage and support one another as Christians. These questions are in the description below this video, but they'll also pop up on the screen after I finish talking. Well, thank you so much for joining with me on this journey through Colossians. I hope you found it encouraging. I've used quite a few sources uh, in these videos and I just want to thank particularly Mark Menel for his book on Colossians and would recommend it as a good read if you want to learn a bit more about the book. I also just want to give a bit of a shout out to James Pinto, our curate, who encouraged me in these podcasts. So thank you, James. Well, have a nice day, everyone. God bless.